express this to you again. I said this last week. I want to make sure I clarify this. I want to be very clear about this. That there is a misconception that's went around the world today that we are all children of God. I'm going to say this again to you. I'm going to say this to everybody that's watching this online because I want it to be understood. There's a lot of false doctrine that has entered the world today. And one of the greatest doctrines that is false today that is going to bust hell wide open is to go through the world that we live in today and tell everybody that they are a brother and sister in Christ. You are not a brother and sister in Christ until your name has been placed in the Lamb's book of life. Until you have been bought and redeemed with the blood of Christ Jesus to become a joint heir with Christ right. at that point. That's Amen. biblical truth. Now, I know it's not popular. Nobody likes to hear that. I'm going to tell you what, folks, as long as God is going to allow me to preach behind this pulpit, I'm going to preach true. Amen. I'm going to preach a balanced gospel, a gospel that says that there is a heaven and there is a hell. There's a heaven to be gained and a hell to be shunned. The Bible says that narrow is the path that leadeth to righteousness, and few there be that find a great is the, 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 the gate that, that, that many are going to go in at. God's going to look at us one day. We're all going to stand before the judgment seat of Christ. And I can tell you this, that if you have lived wickedly all the days of your life and you have never accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, God is not going to look at you and say, my son. Right. He's going to say, depart from me, you worker of iniquity. I never knew you. That's the truth. Only will he look at you if you have asked Jesus to be your Lord and Savior and have asked him into your heart and your life to forgive you of your sins. Will he look at you and say, well done, thou good and faithful servant. Enter into the joys of the Lord. It's not a popular message, but it's a message that we need to hear today. <laughs> look at my title today. You're like, man, you just beat us plumb down first thing this morning. I'm not trying to. <laughs> I think that the world we live in today uh, has beat us down ridiculously. I'm just going to say this. I think that uh, the political climate and everything that we've been through here recently has beat us down. I think health issues have beat us down. I think that there are a lot of things today that have just beat us down and trodden us down. Uh, we, we are in a society today where so many feel like there's no hope left. That, that uh, we're discouraged and, and we're downtrodden. But man, Christians should have their heads lifted high. We should be happy. We should be encouraged because our redemption draws nigh. We are closer than we've ever been to going home and being with the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords forever. To walking on pain. Streets of gold. Yeah. I ain't never done that before. <laughs> I ain't never done that before. I think that's going to be cool. I may even do a little moonwalking on it while I'm up there. Who knows? I'm going to go dance. Uh, yeah. A lot of people tell me, oh, no, you can't dance. Well, I'm going to tell you what, if I get to heaven and can't dance, I'm going to be mad. <laughs> <laughs> tell them I'm going to go back. <laughs> get your head up. Title today's message. I was, <laughs> I was uh, thinking about this man uh, that I talked with a few weeks ago. He was telling me about talking with God, and he said, "God, how long is a million years?" And God said to me, "About a minute." And he said, "Well, God, how much is a million dollars?" He said, "Well, to me." about a penny and he said God can I have a penny mm. God said wait a minute <laughs> oh that's such a corny preacher joke right there <laughs> gotta keep it clean right huh? if you're happy and you know it clap your hands if you're happy and you know it clap your hands if you're happy and you know it then your face will surely show it if you're happy and you know it clap your hands that's a good way to get started off this morning. Hey, listen, I want to read you a message that I read this week. And it said this, from uh, when it looks like the curtain is closing, a stoic rages, rages against the dying of life. A stoic does not go quietly into the good night. They stand instead like those 300 Spartans, firm and ready. They hope against hope. They do not give in. They say this might be a foregone conclusion, but you're still 
what I have to make me. They know that fortune gives as suddenly as she takes and they are ready for that 1% chance. In fact, there's a part of a stoic that hears there is only 1% chance and says, not stupidly, not ironically, okay, so you're saying there's a chance. Hmm. Man, how encouraging is that to hear somebody that's positive? Yeah, that'll take that 1% chance and say, oh, so you mean there is a chance? There is a chance. Man, I'll tell you what, we live in a world today where if we're not 100% positive that something's going to work out, we won't take a chance on it. Our kids are being brought up in a society today where everything has to be completely fulfilled and ironed out and laid out. Hey, listen, I'm not telling kids to do this, but let me tell you something. I just turned 50 the 28th of December. One of the things that I've recognized and realized in my 50 years is they go by quick. But I also realized, man, you can totally screw your life up for the first 30 years of your life and still turn out good. You can mess it up for 40 and still make it at 50. Now, I'm not encouraging you to do that. Kids, listen to me. It's not what I want for you. But I'm telling you this. Don't get bridled down and bought in to a system that has set you in a place where you can never fulfill your dream or live your life. God wants to bless you. And if you got 1%, you got a chance, man. Sometimes we don't take chance. We live in a society today where we become uh, uh, so concerned about taking the leap, taking a chance. We're so fearful. In the United States of America today, we become one of the most complacent, fearful countries on the face of the planet. Yeah. Yeah. It's because we've been babied and pampered, right. catered to for so long. Right. We haven't had to struggle. Like we're starting to face right now. and starting to show itself. It's rearing its ugly head. And the people that walk up and down the corridors of this thing that we call the United States of America. He goes on and says this. Whether you're facing the long odds of getting clean. Or getting your kids back. Whether it's the odds of winning the election. Or that promotion. Whether it's starting a successful business or making the Olympic team. You have to fight. You must rage against the odds, against the dim chances. Don't go quietly. Don't accept it passively. Fight. Fight with all that you have. Amen. We live in such a limp-wristed, lukewarm, wishy-washy, milly mouth culture of Christians today. We have lost our ability to fight. We've allowed people to stand in and tell us that we can't talk about politics in the church anymore. We can't do this. We can't do that. We have to accept this. We have to accept that. I accept what the Word of God says. Yes. True. Black and white. Red letter edition. The words of Jesus. That's what I accept. And if God says that he meant it, and he's here to represent it. Amen? We need to get back to trusting the Word of God and being faithful to the Word of God and being faithful to the God that gave us it. Amen. Let our fear dissipate and fade. We're afraid to say anything. Hey, me and my father and all got in a heated fight here Wednesday night over politics. It's just accidental, man, but it happened. But you know what? We Well, I was going to say we kissed and made up. We didn't do that. <laughs> we didn't do that. That's another problem in the church. We become accepted and everything. I kissed my father in law, you ain't either. <laughs> But we did hug each other's neck, shake each other's hand, tell each other we loved each other. Amen. Things get taken out of context sometimes. Sometimes, man, we rush into conversations and we're emotionally charged up because of things. It's all right. We need to be a little more emotionally charged up in the world that we live in. I want to tell you what, with my kids, I would rather work my whole life till them calm down, settle down, ease down, whoa down, whoa down, than to spend my whole life going, come on, man, come on, let daddy pick you up, get you going, oh my God, you wear me out. Come on, man. We need a little heart, a little zeal, a little fire in us. We've lost it. I was looking at the Word of God today in, in the scriptures of Jeremiah, the sixth chapter. I want to read you something that closely resembles what I would consider even today's political climate. 
In Jeremiah, the sixth chapter, verse 13, it says, For from the least of them, even to the greatest of them, everyone is greedy for gain. And from the prophet, even to the priest, everyone deals falsely. It's a sad state of time that we live in. When we will convert all of our energy and all of our effort into being deceptive for the almighty dollar. And we'll let people perish along the way. Won't we'll feed somebody a meal. Won't we'll clothe somebody who's naked. Won't we'll help a widow who's lonely. All the things that God encourages us to do in His Word, His holy, inerrant, infallible Word, we have displaced and wrote a whole other gospel. A gospel that's going to bust hell wide open one day. I used to think it was the legalistic, narrow minded. That, 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 that just absolutely preached their doctrine down your throat. We've become so loose and wild within the church. We don't have any doctrine anymore. Right. That's right. We may be a non-denominational church here at Momentum Community Church, but I'm going to tell you something. We're going to follow the Bible. Right. We're going to follow the Word of God, page for page, line upon line, precept upon precept. We've turned the church into a fiasco, a, a, a concert, a show, a, a performance-based uh, setup. Jeremiah says in the sixth chapter, he goes on at verse 14, They have healed the brokenness of my people superficially, saying, Peace, peace, but there is no peace. Started way back in that hippie culture back in the 60s and 70s. Make love, not war. Peace. Somehow we got this doctrine that came into the church that God being all loving and all caring and all merciful that anything outside of that was ungodly. But did they read the ecclesiastical book? Do they read all through the word of God? Do they hear when God says that even the angels of heaven are at war today over souls who are dying lost? That's right. Folks, we've got to become charged up again. Right. Right. That old country song is so true. I've said it so many times. you got to stand for something or you're going to fall for anything. And we have become a culture and a society today that has fallen for anything and everything that comes along. Let somebody with a pretty smile stand on a television set and say it and we accept it and buy into it and throw our money at it and throw our lives at it. And yet the little churches in the community where pastors are still trying to preach truth are dying off. Right. Because people say that's harsh. You're, you're, you're being too harsh. <sighs> Come on. Come on. I'll say this. This will make somebody mad. We wouldn't have a problem with Antifa and all that other junk if we wouldn't have took uh, corporal punishment out of the school systems. Right. Yeah. I'll tell you what, that old wooden paddle meant something to me. Oh, yeah. <laughs> huh? I got to know that thing well. Huh? It may have taken years to change my, my concept. But uh, it worked day in and day out. Right. I had a teacher one time, Heather, she hates it when I tell this story, but had a teacher by the name of Mrs. Johnson. I love her. Over at Parkview Elementary School, primary actually. I was in the third grade. I told my wife, I was such a rough kid, I got paddled every single day in the third grade. Mm. Every day. She said, Reno, that's ridiculous. That's one of those preacher embellishment stories. I said, no, man, I got paddled every single day in the third grade. <laughs> Sometimes two or three times a day. She's like, oh, God. So I remember I made Miss Johnson so mad one day. She had on, back then, I don't know what to call them now. Back then, they called them go-go boots. She had on these big black go-go boots come all the way up to here. And I'll bet somewhere, someplace, in some school, that desk still exists. There's a black mark. That runs all the way up that dude where I made Mrs. Johnson so mad she took that go-go boot and said, Read all night! You're making me crazy! Get out of the hall! Oh, she snatched that paddle. 
shower up. Hmm. Put your hands on the wall. Wham! <laughs> Go back in the classroom. <laughs> She'd snatch me by my collar before I'd ever get set back down. <laughs> Yank me back out in the hallway. Paddle me again just for laughing on my way into the classroom. <laughs> Heather said, Rena, that's so ridiculous. And then many years later, after I'd given my life to Christ, I was doing evangelistic work and I was preaching to churches everywhere. We were back here in town for the week and I was holding a week-long revival at the Nazarene Church across town. I didn't know what had ever happened to little old Miss Johnson. Hadn't seen her in years and years and years and years and years. Since I was in the third grade, I hadn't seen Miss Johnson probably. We were over there and I was, after I'd preached my guts out, I'd sweat plumb through my clothes. And I was shaking people's hands. I was talking with people as they was leaving. And all of a sudden I seen this lady and I could tell by the hands on her hip who it was. <laughs> and she came up to me. She a little bitty thing. And she looked at me, oh, she had aged so much, and she said, Reno Bates. And I said, Mrs. Johnson. And I'm going to tell you with every ounce of truth that's in me, she looked directly at my wife that was standing right next to me, and she said, he was such a little turd. She said, do you know I paddled his rear end every single day when he was in the third grade? I said, I told you, I told you. I told you I wasn't lying. <laughs> Every single day. But I'm going to tell you what. It was because I had a fire in me, man. Sometimes it's hard to tame people who are passionate. Right. I had passion in me in the third grade. And I got passion in me now. Right. Just my passions have changed. My passion for being a roughneck. My passion for being a dopehead. My passion for being a drunk has turned over to becoming a passion for being a Christian. What's wrong with that? Not a thing. Right. Some of you are so passionate in your walk in sin. And now that you've become a Christian. Well, God said, holy, holy, holy. Come on, man. Right. Lift your hands up. Praise the Lord. Act like you got some sins. Show some passion. Show some love. We live in a country today where we need more passion than we've ever had. That's right. I watched our country this last year go through riots, burning cities down, tearing the country apart. And then all of a sudden, the tables turned. Here this last week, we have some men and women with some passion who want to see things differently. And now we're telling them, no. No, you can't do that. You can't, you can't show passion. Well, wait a minute. What's good for the goose is good for the gander, ain't it? That's right. Oh, I know people saying, Reno, you shouldn't, you shouldn't promote that. You shouldn't preach that. I'm, I'm, I'm not. I'm just saying, man, there comes a point in time where we've got to get our head up. Right. We have walked around with our head down. But I'm going to tell you what, man. I get so tired of seeing people, you can't even talk to them anymore, man. They just mope around, cell phone in hand. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now they got a mask on, man. You can't tell if they're smiling or what. Uh, they don't even know what's going on. They're just mad. They're mad. They hate the world. Gee. Boy, you just gotta be kidding me, man. That's why I don't wear a mask. Don't people see my beautiful face. <laughs> You see the smile I carry with me every day, right? Because I'm happy, and I know it. And I will clap my hand, that's not my feet, and all the other aspects of that song. Because I'm happy. And I'm going to walk with my head up. Right. One, because i got to see where I'm going. I wear a size 16 shoe, walk around my head down, fall on my own feet, man, kill myself. I'm getting too old, I can't stumble and tumble around anymore. So i got to see where I'm going. i got to keep my head up. In the military, they take you head on a swivel. Look out for the enemy. Watch. You know, the Bible says that the devil walks about as a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. We're the bumblebee, 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 bumblebee. <laughs> Walk through life with our head down, waiting just to be destroyed. Right. It's time to get your head up, Christians. It's time to get your head up, church. It goes on and it says this in verse 15. Were they ashamed because of the abomination they'd done? They were not even ashamed at all. They did not even know how to blush. Therefore they shall fall among those who fall. At the time that I punish them, 
They shall be cast down, says the Lord. Did you hear that? It's the time that I punish them, says the Lord. They shall be cast down. That's God in and of himself telling us, hey, we don't have to render punishment. Vengeance is mine, saith the Lord. God's going to take care of it. We spend too much time worrying about it often enough. We don't want to do anything about it, but we'll spend all our time worrying about it. You know, that is put up or shut up. So verse 16 says, Thus says the Lord, Stand by the ways and sin ask for the ancient paths, where the good way is, and walk in it, and you will find rest for your souls. But listen to this, what they said. We will not walk in it. That's the problem that we have today. Is that God has offered us uh, a resolve of peace, man, to be able to walk in, to walk with our head held high, to be encouraged, to love others, and to spread the gospel of Christ Jesus. We have a church today who has become absolutely defined and put their foot down and said, we will not do it. We will not do it. So we have put the gamut and the weight on pastors and preachers. It's no wonder we have false prophets everywhere. Right. We have people who are uneducated just rising up, sometimes trying to do the will of God, man. They just don't know what they're doing. Right. And then they become easily deceived, bought out by the almighty dollar. And Joshua, the first chapter, we'll get into this today. I'm going to keep you long. Joshua, the first chapter, verse 5, it says, No man will be able to stand before you all the days of your life. Just as I have been with Moses, I will be with you. Listen to what God is telling you. In the Old Testament, he's saying, I will not fail you or forsake you. Right. Be strong and courageous. For you shall give this people possession of the land which I swore to their fathers to give to them. Only be strong and very courageous. Again, what's good for the goose is good for the gander. If God was looking at the Israelite nation as they were being suppressed, about to be Placed back into slavery and bondage. About to be cast back under the whip. And God was being uh, just clear and saying, being strong and courageous. And yet we were preaching a gospel today that's telling people to cower down, back away, hide from everything. That's crazy to me. We need to become strong and courageous again as Christians. How are we ever going to disperse the gospel of Christ Jesus if we sit around Milly mouth with our mouths shut and say nothing to nobody and hope that they receive Jesus as a Lord right, and Savior. Right. Well, I'll tell you what, I got a 29 year old, 30 year old son in prison right now doing five years. Not because he was a dealer, not because he had uh, anything to do with uh, just, he's just a drug addict, man. He's just a drug addict. He got hooked on meth and heroin, man, and just never could find his way away from it. Every time he tried, he'd find himself falling right back into the same old trap. Right. People say, well, Rio, you know, you can just go ahead to pamper him and love him and cuddle him and squeeze him and hug him and kiss him and love him. I said, I ain't doing that. I threw him out of my house. I said, son, you can't do that here. You got to beat it, man. Kick him up, dude. I love you, but I can't have it. You got brothers and sisters. Who recognize and realize what you're doing. You got a little sister. Who has inherently learned how to build a wall up against you. Because she knows you're going to be gone. When she sees you high for two days. And then four days. And then two weeks. And then two months. Little Liberty is just a little baby girl. And yet she learned. By dealing with it. How to put up her own defense. And say No. Let's don't play the tickle game, Bubby. Let's don't play the I love you. Come and grab me and pick me up and throw me in the air. I don't want it today. Because I can tell you're high. And you probably won't be here in two days. I know I won't see you in two weeks. Isn't that a shame? Those are the defense mechanisms that God gives us, teaches us to grow up with. But then I was amazed that that same little girl finally got fed up to the point that she got a voice. You know why? Because she heard that daddy had a voice. And that mommy had a voice. And if daddy and mommy had a voice, she could have a voice too. Amen. Never will forget the day that she looked at her brother and she said, No! You're doped up! 
And I don't want to play. And stormed off into her room. And he looked at me like, well, aren't you going to do something? No! You're doped up! And I stormed off into my room. People said, well, you know, you counsel people in that area. You help people in that area. You're right, I do. I try to help everybody I can in that area. So does Chad, so does Jason, so does so many others. But there comes a point in the time where you have to release yourself of some things or you're going to be swallowed up in all the hurt and all the pain and all the guilt and all the grief that it brings with them every time they come to the door. you got to take a stand for something. Right. That's part of the problem that we have in the country that we live in today. We've become weak. We're not strong and courageous anymore. How are we ever going to tell our children to get their head up and lift their dreams if we're always telling them that every time somebody says something to them, to cower down and to bow down? I'll tell you right now, uh, I'm, I'm glad my kids are going through virtual school because it's fear for me every day. Because I know the attitude my, my, my 17 year old's got. Huh, she'll punch you in the mouth. But she's also been taught throughout her life that, hey, you don't let somebody beat you down. Right. You know, we live in a society today where they tell kids that. I tell my kids, come home safe. Come home safe. If you can turn, if you can get away from it, get away from it. Whatever you have to do, you come home, you come home safe, and we'll deal with it at that point as a family, as a father with a son and a daughter. But... All of you know as well as I do, there are points and times in your life where you just can't get away. They follow you. They push you in the back. They kick you in the rear end. They smack you in the back of the head. Never will you set yourself up to get killed. Until you turn around and hit one of them right in the mouth. It changes their attitude. Whoa! Huh. <laughs> what expected all that? Be courageous. Be strong. In our country today, we need to rise up, be the Christians that God's called us to, take a stand for the Word of God, stand on the Word of God, believe what we preach, and tell people about it, not cower away and hide away because of all the political nonsense that's going on in our world today, but stand up and stand firm for the Word of God and in the Word of God and preach the Word of God and tell people about the Word of God and tell people about Jesus, tell them how He died for their sins, tell them about the crucifixion, tell them about the cross, tell them about the blood, tell them about His death, tell them about His resurrection, but tell Tell them about Jesus. Amen. It goes on and says in verse 8, This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but you shall meditate on it day and night, so that you may be careful to do according to all that is written in it. All that is written in it. For then you will make your way prosperous, and then you will have success. Have I not commanded you be strong and courageous? Do not tremble or be dismayed, for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. Church, get your head up. Get out of Facebook and get into God's book. Right. See what it'll do for you. Let it teach you. Let it guide you. Let it direct you. Let it be your lead in this thing that we call life. I got so many things that I was thinking of. I have so many notes. Like I said, I could preach a, a series of messages today, but I want to turn to the book of Psalms. I want to just give you scripture today. I want it to be biblically based. I want you to hear what the Word of God says. So in the book of Psalms, in the 27th chapter, listen to this. For in the day of trouble, this week has dictated itself more trouble in this country than we've seen in a very, very long time. And folks, I don't think we're done yet. I really don't. So it says, For in the day of trouble he will conceal me in his tabernacle. In the secret place of his tent will he hide me. He will lift me up on rock. Now my head will be lifted up above my enemies around me. And I will offer in his tent sacrifices with shouts of joy. I will sing Yes, I will sing praises to the Lord. Is your praise or broke today? Have you forgot what it takes to be lifted up and be encouraged? It takes the word of God. It takes prayer to God. It takes praises to God. We lift up our voice about anything and everything today. We'll fight over Joe Biden and Donald Trump, but we'll take a back seat and cower down to Jesus Christ in a conversation. 
That's what we're missing out in the world today. If you want to see the politics of our country change, change the attitude of the church. The church used to be the political powerhouse in the world that we lived in. Now we've taken a back seat to everything and everybody. We've been pushed around and shoved long enough. I'm going to tell you what, this preacher's been slapped in the back of the head one too many times. I ain't taking it. I'm going to stand for what I believe in. And I'm going to stand firm and founded on the word of God. I'm not going to be afraid to say what I need to say. To tell people what they need to hear. Because they need to hear it. Because in not doing so. I am simply. A reed shaking in the wind. Following every form of wind of doctrine. I'm a babbling brook that just trickles out words. I read Fox's Book of Martyrs and I was encouraged to be reminded of those that still today are dying for their love of Christ Jesus. Yes, I said still today. In 2000, 2000 over in Asia over 126,000 people were martyred for their love of Christ Jesus people over in the Orient go to prison for years for reading this thing that we have the liberty to carry with us everywhere we go they take little pieces of paper and they write passages of scripture on them and after everyone in the prison has passed it around and memorized it, whoever receives it last will eat it. They literally consume the Word of God and memorize the Word of God. They can quote whole chapters of the Bible from memory. Whole books of the Bible from memory. Because it is of that great of value to them. You know why? Because they have looked at the great United States of America and saw the freedom and the liberties that we have been blessed with and given. And yet we are so easily going to give it all away. So many people are looking to us. Yes, I said us. Amen. You and I. Amen. This Facebook message today. This YouTube message today. I mean, I've seen people that have tuned in from Oklahoma, and Kansas, and St. Louis, and Chicago, and different places. But who do we know who's watching it secretly and privately somewhere on a cell phone down in the basement or a room? And they are rooting for us. Yes! Preach, preacher! Go, church! Do it! So that revival begin in the house of the Lord. Amen. Amen. The revival begins in the house of the Lord. read this to you in Luke the 21st chapter verse 25 says listen to this there will be signs in the sun and the moon and the stars we have people that were so excited here just uh, at Christmas time because what they call the star of Bethlehem I don't know really if that's what it was or not but it was a planet and a star aligning to what people called the star of Bethlehem anyway. I'm not a scientist, so I'm saying I don't know. I, I mean, it sounds good, right? It was cool. I went out and looked at it until my eyes went crossed. You know, I was staring up in the sky. There will be signs in the sun and the moon and the stars and on earth dismay among nations. Well, don't that sound familiar? Perplexity at the roaring of the sea and the waves. We're amazed right now at things that are going on in the world that we live in. Perplexed. Seeing storms like we've never seen. I was telling my father and I laughed because one of the big headlines last night was that Pakistan had a, a huge power outage. We pay attention to so many crazy things. Pakistan has 76 power outages a year. Their infrastructure is horrible. But just because it's around all this political climate, man, we want to make something huge out of it. I don't know, maybe it is. My focus isn't on Pakistan's power outage. My 
I'm focusing on each and every one of you and your families, your loved ones. I'm focused on this young man's family right here. Do you hear me, church? Right. 24 years old. Felt like life wasn't worth living anymore. Placed a firearm in his own mouth and took his own life. And you wonder why I'm not overly interested in the political climate and stuff that's going on in the world today. It's because I'm a preacher, a pastor right here in this community. I'm dealing with people who have needles hanging out of their arms today. I'm wondering if they're going to live to breathe tomorrow. I have my own family, one who's in prison right now, kids that I'm trying to raise in this extremely psychotic culture where they can't even go to school. The madness of me trying to be a teacher. <laughs> Thank God they took corporal punishment out of the schools. <laughs> Done killed all of my kids. I already make them cry trying to teach them math. <laughs> Stupid stuff. Draw a box. Doesn't even make sense. Right. Dumb. Right. Incorporated art class and math together. I don't know. Dismay among the nations, perplexity at the roaring of the sea and the waves, men fainting from fear and the expectation of things which are coming upon the world. Why are we afraid, church? That's right. Why are we fearful? Come on. Why are we falling away afraid? It doesn't matter what happens. I can't go be with Jesus. That's right. The sooner the better. Amen. But I know what the Word of God says. It says that in the last days, gross darkness will encompass the earth and sin will wax worse and worse. Right. That's right. And that's why I say, church, I don't think we've seen the worst of it yet. Amen. So you better get your head up. <laughs> you better pay attention to what's going on. You better quit looking at your Facebook and start looking at God's book a little more. Right. You better get in the Word of God and understand what it says because prophetically, it's all right here. Yeah. It's playing out before. The Bible, the living, breathing Word of God is living and breathing in front of us right here, right now, today. And the Holy Spirit is wanting to guide us and direct us in the pathways of these words. Men fainting from fear and expectation of the things which are coming upon the world. For the powers of the heavens will be shaken. But listen to this in verse 27. Woo! Woo! <laughs> They will see the Son of Man coming in a cloud with power and great glory. Amen. Reminds me of that scene in that movie 300 where Spartacus is on the edge of that cliff. That big sucking hole. Sparta! <laughs> That's my God. Behold, he comes riding on a cloud. Shining like the sun. Oh, let the trumpets call. He's coming. He's coming for his church. And he's coming for those who love him. Verse 28 says, But when these things begin to take place, straighten up. Lift up your hand, little Christian soldier. Because your redemption draws near. Wow. Wow. <laughs> There are some of you that are battling depression and sickness, all manner of things going on in your life. Get your head up. Get your head up. You're going to miss it. Those who are walking with their head down, staring at their feet, it's not the way God intended for us to live. He said, get your head up. Watch the eastern sky. Because the trump's going to resound and the sky is going to split. I'm going to call you all to come home to be with me in the twinkling of an eye. People say, how can that happen? How are people going to explain that when the rapture takes place? I don't know. I don't know. I really don't care. Because I'm out of here, man. I'm afraid of heights. That's why God's got to take me in the twinkling of an eye. If it takes any more than that there to get me there, I'm going to go. Well, I have a heart attack on the way to heaven. 
twinkle in an eye. Out of here. Get your head up. You realize in every cemetery that when we lay people to rest, we bury them with their feet pointing to the east and their head facing that eastern sky. Do you know that? Tombstone will be set at the head of the grave. Body will be laid in state. Because even in the days of old, they knew that when God comes back, we're coming out of the graves. We're coming off the earth. And God even wanted those that are laying in state to be able to see him when he comes from. Out of here, man. Are you ready? Are you prepared? How are they going to explain it, Reno? When the rapture takes place and the church is called home. I don't know. Probably won't have to. Probably won't be much explaining to do because most people are just going to be like yes. They ain't even going to notice it. Mom, Dad, my home. Hey, Bobby, Sissy, am I here? <laughs> uh, go in my room, throw more trash on the floor, play some video games. You realize how, I'm serious. Do you realize how many days that could go on in the world that we live in before anybody even notice? Get your head up, church. Pay attention. Same with me today. God is coming back for his church. I know that things are depressing at times. I know that it feels like that it's more than we can oftentimes handle. But don't allow the things that are going on in this world to override the things that are going on in your own life, man. Pay attention. Pay attention to what's going on in the world. Because it's Bible prophecy being played out before your eyes is cool. But don't be afraid. Right. Don't put your head down. Don't be fearful. Get your head up. Get your head up. The battles are tough enough without allowing everything that's going on in the world today to bring us even further down into a depressed state and condition. We have people that are out in the nursing home today that we can't visit. Some who inevitably will pass from this earth without no one being by their side. Keep your head up, Reno. I've got a church today that, that telling me you got to shut the doors on, man, because people don't wear masks and you have too many people congregated together and all these crazy things are going, man, shut up. You ain't got time for all that. Right. You got time for all that. I got funerals to preach that I don't want to be preaching. I did a wedding here last week. Most of you don't even know about it. I did two of them. Well, I did one. Jason did one. <laughs> Happy for those couples. Be encouraged today. So said, well, your message ain't very encouraging. Well, it should be. Right. You're here, aren't you? Amen. You're alive. God put breath in your lungs. I think Shara, I think she posted something this week. I got tickled at yesterday, I think when I read it, is that she said that uh, she's grabbing a box of popcorn and she's going to sit back and watch it all play out. Cool. <laughs> Me too. Because I got too much going on, man, to get all involved myself. Right. I got enough going on in my own life. I'm trying to keep my head up about and the devil beats me down about it. And all of you, you're reminded of things daily. Satan reminds you of this and that. Well, you're wrong here and you're wrong there. And you did this and you did that. Or remember back then. Or remember that there. Or remember this here. Or remember who passed away here. Or remember what's going on there. Or remember you've been divorced. Or remember this. Or all these things, man. We just get be down and 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 be down. God is encouraging us to rise up. Rise up, Christian. Get your head up. Smile at someone again. Try it. They'll like it. Look, y'all just smile. That's so cool to me. Do you know my mask has smiles on them? You know, one that looks like the Joker. It's got a big red nose and big smiley teeth. They got another one that's got, I don't know, it's a crazy skull head or something. Got big smiley teeth on it. Because even if I have to wear a mask, I'm going to smile at somebody. Because I ain't all sad and downtrodden. 
I'm happy, and I know it, and I hope you are too. The way to ultimately receive that happiness and carry it with you and keep you all the days of your life is to know Christ Jesus as Lord and Savior. And if you don't know him today, allow that happiness to make its way into your heart and your life. And you can do that today by simply praying a prayer as simple as this. God, forgive me of my sins. Come into my heart and into my life. Save me today, I pray. And help me to live like Jesus. Because I understand that he died for my sins. What I should have died for. He paid the price. And so God I am thankful. For the gift that you've given me. And so I lift my head to the heavens today. To give you thanks. And praise and glory and honor. In Jesus name. Amen. Amen.